the 80s, but um, I was working on my brick stitch earring that um, Emily presented last Wednesday on Bead Shop Live. And so I was working on it, and of course, I only got to one. But I have the other one, it only needs dangles on it, so I'm super close. So I didn't quite finish it, but it's on the horizon. So I'll share with you um, what it is that um, that I uh, used, um, so you can see that up close and personal. But I want to make sure that I can see everybody. It looks like people are jumping on to YouTube, which is great. Let's see if I've received my um, my notification on Facebook. Let's see. Well, it looks like some of you guys are watching, but it hasn't come up on my phone yet. Let me see. I can see you guys are out there, but my phone is a little slow to grab the broadcast. So let me see if I can find it the old fashioned way by scrolling through and see if it's there. Well, I hope everybody's having a great Friday. I'm having a great Friday. Um, it's great to be back for a free tip Friday and I'm really excited. There I am. I can, I can see myself, but I just didn't get a, um, a notification, but I see you guys. There you guys are. Perfect. Alrighty. So, um, I got a, um, oh, I see Curtis. Hello. Good morning. Or maybe it's afternoon where you're watching now. I know that you guys watch us from all over the globe, which is, I think it's incredible, which is great. And, um, so as I said, good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you might be. So uh, we've got everybody jumping on. We've got Janice, I see, has jumped on over on our YouTube channel. And um, Gita is actually um, having a night off, is out and about somewhere in uh, Denmark, somewhere in Copenhagen, maybe, I don't know, whooping it up. So she is not going to be moderating. So if anyone wants to jump in and... Um, throw some uh, links in, feel free to do so. But that's what we've got going on. Um, all right, well, it's great. I did see just before I went on, uh, Jackie, you were saying that you were very pleased that it was time for Free Tip Friday because you need some inspiration. Well, I've got inspiration for you. Not only this fantastic, whoops, there we go, this way, this fantastic Alfred mug that I'm going to drink my tea slash gin out of. Um, I am going to uh, jump in and share with you guys um, what we're going to do today. Of course, our fantastic design team lead, Allie Mori, that Allie, as soon as we put up the um, monthly mix for October, and it's right here, Fall Gourds, October 2019, it's right here for you. Um, it's an alley designed mix. Uh, she did an amazing job, I think, and I I love it, and I know you guys love it too. Um, she uh, jumped in and created this amazing, what we're calling the Fall Gourds Wrap. So dream, she showed it to me like, I think it was Tuesday, right? It's Friday now. She goes, oh, BT Dub, here you go. And I was like, wait, what? So she got it in the mail super fast. Maybe it was Monday. I can't remember. Anyway, she got it in the mail. Thank you, Allie Mori. And um, Drea jumped on it and Karen jumped on it. They photographed it. They laid it out. And so it's a project. So if you go to beadshop.com and you go to, it's a slider right on the front. Um, it says Allie's Mix and Allie's Project. We can't wait to make the Fall Gourds Wrap. If you click on it, um, you're going to see everything you need um, for it. It's all right there. So um, she also sent that cheeky Ali Mori. If you scroll down, yesterday she sends me, I get this, I get these. Let me show you. I get these photos from her. And I'm going to walk you through these as well. So there are smaller versions of this fall gourd wrap. So we've got fall gourd wrap coming out of our ears, which is amazing. They're super inspiring. And so, Jackie, I hope you're inspired by all of this. 
but I'm going to show you all of this. But if you go to the project, if you go right here, you can see, I'll show you, it's right here on the website. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, and those of you who are new watching us, I want to make sure that I don't have any um, tabs open that you guys shouldn't see. Hang on a second. There we go. If you scroll down, let me show you. Here's, I'm, I'm on my laptop here, though some of you, let me see, is it centered? There we are. Um, you go right to the project page, right? And it says Fall Gourds Wrap, right? And if you scroll down, you can see everything that's there. You can also see right here under Project Info, let me get my glasses so I can see what I'm doing. For those of you who are new, who aren't um, always versed in how we do these things, so you can see here's the project info, all the quantity and stuff that you need for the product that project that corresponds with what's going on here on this side of the there we go of the page. And then you scroll down and there's a place called it's kind of hard for you guys to see on the screen. But there's a place right here if I keep going over it's called additional learning right there. That has all the additional learning that you need. The how to macrame link, how to ladder link, how to add thread to a laddering project, as well as Allie's famous splice. It's on page 13 of the episode notes that are linked there. Okay, so when you look at our projects, and if you're new to this, if you're fairly new to beadshop.com, if you go to any of our projects, and, and many of them over the past few years, you know, we've enriched and <clears throat> had um, you know, adding more stuff and adding more opportunities for learning. So when you go down to additional learning, you'll see all the links, the things that you need to go to for additional learning, plus if there's episode notes, all that kind of stuff. So don't forget about the additional learning section, okay? <clears throat> then it'll also tell you a couple more things that are important. It'll tell you what level it is. It's hard for you to see my screen right there but it'll tell you this one's all levels and it'll tell you how long to dedicate to this project. And then under um, the project map and Karen does, these are, Bead Shop is famous for our project maps, right? I think that was a, a Janice um, invention so long ago is that she put in, um, the project map, Karen lays out the piece so you can really study it. You know, you could take a screenshot of it, however you want to do it. But then if you keep scrolling down, um, there are the two supplemental fall gourd projects. Then Drea does sometimes some writing and clarification about what you're seeing up there. So this whole shebang is, there's so much learning for you. So it's, um, it's crazy, it's crazy. So um, it's all there, all the additional learning, all everything there. So um, when you go to our projects, really dive in, scroll down to the bottom of the project. There's all kinds of other information, usually at the bottom of the page, that's really super helpful, okay? So it's really great to have everybody here. I'm seeing people from all over the world, which is great. Um, I see someone just popped in from Hawaii. Hello, aloha. It's great to have you here. Um, so it's really fantastic to, uh, to be all together on this Friday. And as I said, my earring, and I'm going to turn the camera around and you guys will be able to see it. I'll do an up close of this earring before we get any further. And then you'll see truly how messy my desk is on this free tip Friday. So as always, on Fridays, I'm going solo. So bear with me while I move this camera around. I'm still working on a multi-camera shoot. I was practicing it yesterday. I may or may not have gone live in this weird way. I don't know. I think I erased everything. So, but I'm still working on it. So please bear with me. I'm going to have that multi-camera shoot set up. I promise. I'm still working. All right. So yes, I see so many people coming from from Italy. Ciao. Ciao, Bella. It's great to have you from Italy and from <clears throat> um, New Mexico, I see. 
um, all of these wonderful people coming from all over the world, which is great. You know, when we were at the bead retreat um, just a few weeks ago before I went on, uh, Chris and I went on our epic vacation, we had such a great time with, um, we had a great time, oh, sorry, I was showing you the sidewall. There you go. Sorry about that, you guys. Um, we had such a great time. We were chatting about you know, the live broadcasts and all of this stuff. And everybody was cracking up because when we say hello, it's kind of like here in the States, I don't know um, if you guys watched it when you were a kid. I'm dating myself a little bit. But right with Romper Room, did you guys watch Romper Room? For those of you who aren't from the States and never have seen it, it was kind of like a morning kids show. And there was a host, I think it was Miss Marianne, or maybe Miss Marianne changed to Miss somebody else, I don't know. But she would always say good morning, right? And I would, um, I would wait for her to say good morning, Katie, right? And back like in the late 60s and early 70s, I don't know if Katie was that big of a name. There were a lot of Kathys, but not a lot of Katies. So every once in a while, she would say, and I see Katie, and I would lose my mind. I just thought that was the coolest thing ever. So, um, yeah. So, just like Romper Room, who do I say? I see Jackie, I see Tina, I see Kim. So, yeah. So, I would just lose my mind when Romper Room was on. So, anyway, that's my little story while I was moving the camera. So, you can see, you guys, I've got my earring there in front of you uh, for you to look at. And then we'll take a look at the wrap. So if you're on our bead table group, it's our private Facebook group called the bead table. And if you're not, jump on over. If you do Facebook, jump on over and you just have to answer a few little questions and we'll be glad to have you join us over there, right? There's all kinds of talent, all kinds of kind of fun things happen um, for you, uh, for our members over there. Lots of extra knowledge and stuff that happens. So go and join the bead table if you haven't already. We'd love to have you there. Um, but I was seeing on the bead table um, after Emily's broadcast um, and really like right after the broadcast last Wednesday, you guys jumped in and embraced this brick stitch earring, which I'm super tickled about. I just love that you did it. And Emily and I had been talking about this project for a while, okay? And so the one that she made, I just love it. Very reminiscent of Missoni, the Missoni um, uh, designs, uh, just gorgeous, the colors that she chose. I had some beads left over from, um, was it really just Wednesday's project? The leaves, the autumn, um, autumn splendor, autumn splendor um the bracelet that i did i had some of the three millimeter um aqua celsian left over so i just transferred them right over to this project so what i used was i used the 11-190 the nickel plated 11 aught and then i used the um duracoat uh eucalyptus the 11-4481 and I'll have Drea put it up as a, as a project. You can see, see, I'm almost done. Look, it just needs dangles, that's all. And then I used um, the Silver Mercury um, five millimeter rondelle. At least that's what I think I used. Let me just double check that I'm not calling it something I shouldn't. Um, rondelle, silver. Um, do you guys, uh, oh, it's the antique silver, the antique silver five millimeter. You guys don't forget to use our search function on our website. That's how I find everything so super fast. And then I use the matte silver two millimeter cornerless cube along with the antique silver daisy spacer. So it was kind of fun. It's very kind of monochromatic. It's kind of, um, I don't know, kind of fancy pants, a little shiny. I, I don't know. I was in kind of this kind of fancy, fancy look um, to it. I don't know. I loved them. And Kim is saying she loves it when I posted it at zero dark 30. It's true. I was beating a little late 
last night, it's for sure. And I posted it on the bead table. So for those of you who are out of my time zone, it might have looked uh, a little um, a little super late, but I went to bed kind of early, so it's okay. But these don't take that much time, you guys, really. Um, Emily did such a great job on the tutorial. Um, they were really fun. So these work up very quickly, and they would be great for um, holiday gifts. You know, the holidays are coming up. Um, you can just use your remnants. I just went in, we've got some boxes here in the studio um, at Bead Shop in our Facebook Live studio of remnants that we've used in past broadcasts. And I just went in and culled the beads out of those. So I just jumped in and we just, I just went for it and I just kind of found those little odds and ends. So it's a great stash buster project as well. Um, the length, I know you're gonna ask me <clears throat> what this length is, so I'll tell you. From the top of the loop to the bottom of that dangle, it's about two and three quarters inches. I like a long earring because that's just how I am. I like a long earring. Um, and so you can make it short, like we could make it even shorter. You know, you could have shorter dangles like this or longer dangles, you know, just depending on what you like. So um, whatever works for you, okay, whatever works. So again, it's great to have everyone here. I see people from all over jumping on. Thank you, it's great. I see you, Leslie, over from the UK. Good to have you. And you guys, if you are having trouble with um, the Facebook feed, our Facebook feed is super strong and the, um, the broadcast is doing fine, but you can always jump out of your Facebook and jump back in, that might help. You also want to make sure that if you can connect to a Wi-Fi and not um, your data plan, that may also help with watching your streaming. Of course, you can always go to our um, bead shop channel over on YouTube as well, and we're streaming right there also, okay? <coughs> Pardon me. So there we go. So there's the earring. I'll put this one back in my ear. I just have one, but I'll have two soon, all right? And let's look at what we're all here to see, which is Allie's wrap. Let me get these cords out of the way. <clears throat> so they look, so we look a little tidier, I think, maybe. Um, and I'm actually gonna move this board real quick and I'm gonna put Allie's wrap front and center so we can see what's going on here. So if we look at this fall gourds wrap, I'm going to lay it out a little bit like the project map is when you see it on the website. The way, uh, what Allie used is, is this large, what we call our Azteca button. Now Azteca comes in a silver tone and a brass tone, which is gorgeous. You could use either of those. Um, she also used a variety of beads. This is also a great stash buster, okay? So you don't have to, um, you know, you can pick up some of the items if you want and dive into your stash for the rest, you know, whatever works for you. Um, but she did a really great combination of the natural agate star cuts. Can you see that? That star cut, I will tell you, you guys know how I feel about star cuts and I feel great about star cuts. I love them so much. I'm gonna get a little tighter so you guys can see. She used the natural agate, which is a matte bead. And can you see the natural agate goes from this dark carnelian color that's here all the way to these lighter ones. So that natural agate gives you a lot of variation in color, which is great, okay? Then, we used two of the melons, we meaning Allie, <laughs> used the orange brown wash and the, um, the pink, let me make sure I get it right here. <clears throat> it's the pink, um, I think it's the pink luster and these are six millimeter melons. But let me just, I'm gonna jump over there now. Um, bear with me here just a second. Here it is. I want to make sure that I'm saying the right thing. Yes, the golden pink melons. That's what these guys are. Okay, six millimeter. Then um, we've got this six millimeter fire polish, the luster stone gray here. 
And then she used our currants, and she used currants in shell. <coughs> Pardon me. Now, the currants are, I'm going to just put my pointer right there so you can see it. The currants are that recycled glass, that recycled um, African glass bead that we love so much. We carry the currants in a bunch of different colors. So this one is the shell color, but um, you can use any color that works for you, right? And the thing about this bead is the currants has a big hole, and that's what you need here for this section is to have the whole kind of large here, okay? And I'll explain why in just a few. Um, she also used, this is the Matubo, I think it's the um, Jet Chrome um, uh, Matte uh, Matubo. She used that Matubo again because it had such a big hole, you can see here. What we did was we actually substituted the Pony Express in silver. You could use the Pony Express in antique silver. Um, anything, again, that has a big hole will work here. Okay, and then she added just the zinc beads from the mix, right? And just strung fairly randomly. Then the next section is the fall gourds mix. Okay, and this section here, this top section, there are two threads that Ali used. One is um, regular Ceylon, and it's one of her go-tos in gold. Ali uses the gold a lot. Um, and then the sienna and fine. And so strung here is the gold. You can see the macrame here with the gold. And then the laddering here is the sienna with the fine. Um, and so you can kind of mix and match. Use whatever thread color uh, you dig, right? Whatever works for you is fine, right? Um, she used the Distress Brown Indian leather and she used the two millimeter which I like. It makes this bracelet a little more chunky, which I like about that too, okay? But you could go down to the 1.5 millimeter if you wanted. Um, I remember somebody on the bead table, it might have been Marcia, you were asking about alternate colorways for the leather, and I'll show you when I pull this picture up on one of them. Um, uh, Allie named them, of course, and can I remember what she named them? Uh, blooms and argyle, that's what she named them. On the blooms one, she used um, the charcoal metallic, which looks great, and I'll show you that in a second. So you can see here, these sections, these sections run, I don't know, lengthwise, let me see what they run, um, would be, this is about six inches, about seven inches total, about so these are each like one bracelet length one wrap right so here's the evolves that kind of come in and make the breaks in the in the designs and then you can see what Allie used to taper which I really really like here she used a six millimeter luster stone blue and then just tapered it in left a lot of air there and uh, used the star cut on this side which was great okay then she went to the flower section of the design. And then, last but not least, this kind of Bollywood-esque section here, right? And she ended it with Allie's famous splice, which is what I'm actually going to show you today. Okay, so it comes through and around and back around and spliced here. Okay, and I'm going to show you that. Let me show you her variations here because I think you'll also like them. This is the Blooms variation. Okay. Um, let me move it over. There we go so you guys can see it. Let me make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Um, so see how this is a double, it's actually a double wrap. You could make this just a single seven inches. Instead, this is a 14 inch. With that Blooms um, design um, palette. And then can you see how Ali brought it up? Here is a Pony Express. She used those leaves as dangles right here. This right here is that long oval um, jump ring from Nun Designs, that nine millimeter oval. And then it comes through 
see the two strands, they come through here, it comes back through, and I think it's spliced somewhere under here. Allie did her splice. You could finish these like I like to finish them with a silk wrap and knots and stuff at the end, but the splice just looks so neat and tidy with the finish. And then she used the um, Bali button in, um, uh, in copper, which is gorgeous. And then this one, this one's called Argyle, and she used the, um, I think that's the Flower of Life button, I think. It's probably already listed because Drea is just that fast. Yeah, this one's called Argyle Socks, which is awesome. The two wrap, it's the Flower of Life button in Antique Silver. That's this one. And then it's just that Argyle. I love this zigzag pattern. And Kim, you were saying you had done a piece kind of with this kind of zigzaggy pattern as well. I think this is a great pattern to use. And you can see the it's that dark bead just moving through the pattern here that really makes this, um, I, I think, visually pleasing, gives it a real kind of flow through the bracelet. Allie also used um, the pearl. Um, oh, it's the metallic cement that she used here. I'm sorry, I thought this was pearl. This is metallic cement, I think, is what this one was. And in the blooms, she used, um, I'm just checking here. I think she used uh, the metallic charcoal for that one, okay? But again, you could use any of the leather that worked for you. And can you see right here on this, this is um, a kind of a Bollywood, I don't know what I want to say, kind of a Bollywood knockoff or a, not a knockoff, but a Bollywood um, kind of inspired design. Janice did this uh, in a prairie um, broadcast where she did the flat macrame knot and then brought the strands through with beads on the top, then came down and macrame. Um, so it's kind of a cool, a cool little closure for that. I love the way that's that's um, that's looking. And again, she used that pony, um, the pony beads here, um, to kind of hide the splice and everything underneath there. So these, I love them. There's this one, as I said, the argyle socks, which is great, and that blooms. I love the dark background of this, right? Um, it really makes these flowers pop out, which is gorgeous. I love it. Beautifully done, Allie Mori, as I'm sure you are watching. I hope you are, um, which is great. So um, the, uh, and then of course the mix, it's with our Fall Gourds uh, monthly mix here. And we've got more to put into stock. I still think we have some. But don't worry, we're, uh, we've got more for you, um, so don't worry. You, it should hopefully last out the month is what we're hoping for. But wait till you see Novembers. You guys are going to love Novembers as well, right? Um, okay, and someone was asking, um, someone was asking, Denise, you were saying, I guess you could plan this laddering with a weaving pattern coloring page like you gave us. Yeah, I bet you could. I bet you could do... Um, I just posted them in the group, and they're just on the uh, uh, on the episode notes that we posted for the brick stitch. And Karen's going to post them on the main page. Um, it's the looming um, uh, one that Emily made. I'm just looking to see if I can find it here. I downloaded them this morning, but that was hours and hours of work ago. So. Let me see if I can find them. Uh, the brick stitch, brick stip, loom graph. Yeah, yeah, I think you could. Um, you could definitely turn it a little bit, but I'll show you guys in the camera what, I, what I'm saying, what I'm meaning here. It's the loom graph, and you guys can see that. Um, we'll have it up, or as I say, it's in the... Um, um, episode notes for the earring. And you could, you know, the way that the beads are, um, looks like it goes this way, right? The way the beads are lined up. So you could kind of mark it off if you wanted and start to kind of color it in. That would be a great way to kind of 
utilize this loom weaving um, weaving one that Emily made for us. So thank you so much, Emily, for getting those charts done. They are so, um, so super helpful already, which is great. Um, it's great. Really, really great observation, um, Denise, for that. So I think you guys would love it. And as I say, go and grab the um, the brick stitch earring, um, the episode notes for it. Um, and it's on the last four pages of it are those um, are those charts. I also posted them in the files in the bead shop group on Facebook. And Karen's going to post them as standalones also on the website. So you'll be able to find them several different places. Okay, we'll probably post them in Seed Bead School is my is my guess. So. Alrighty, so let me show you um, <clears throat> what I've got here with this piece. Let's do a little bit of learning, a little bit of learning here, okay? Because I think sometimes this is the um, the splice trick is the one that kind of gives people um, a little bit of pause. So I wanted to show you. I can't lose this ear wire because it has to go in my earring. Let me put it over there. Um, and so you can find, uh, so I wanted to demonstrate the, um, you know, just like the splice and stuff for this. And I have the Evolve here. I just grabbed, again, I kind of grabbed what I had in the bin near me. So these colors are a little off from what Allie used. Um, Allie used the terracotta and the zinc, um, and she used the gold. Uh, regular Ceylon, so my um, colors are off just a slight bit, but I know that you'll forgive me for that. Um, and then uh, I'm also using, I also grabbed, since we had it right here, and we're still kind of cleaning up from the retreat, so I had it out, I grabbed the big macrame board, the giant macrame board. Okay, so, um, so that's what I'm working on. And you can see, I'm gonna get kind of tight so you can see how I attached it. I used a T-pin and I used the Azteca button, but I used the little Azteca for this one, not the big one, okay? So I just started it and then I am pinning that sucker down just like that. And it's holding up just fine. And then on the other side, you know, these have the openings in them. You can see I just put my my leather right through there and it's holding up just fine, okay? So you could use a deep dish tray, which is great, or a macrame board, whatever works for you. And then I'm gonna lift so I've got a little tunnel underneath to do my, to do my macrame. Having these T-pins or even regular sewing pins is really helpful. And you don't want to go through the leather, but you could also use these to kind of help you if you get kind of in between a stitch there. It'll kind of help you to um, uh, kind of stabilize everything that you're working on. So um, let me get a little tighter in here and straighten this out. There we go. And I'll show you what I've done so far. So with this, what Allie did on hers, I'm going to scoot this over just a touch. I'm going to bring this one in right here so you can see. So this is actually facing this way, right, you guys, because the button is over here, okay? So Allie, in her original, put the seal on through, did the macrame, did two long strands of seal on right, like this, came in, took two strands and macrame around the other two, and then put all four of those ends that she had through the Matubo, or in our case, the listing, the um, pony bead, then through the currents, then you had one, two, three, four that she strung, 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 strung. Notice how she tapered with the 11 knots right here, right? Strung, strung, strung tapered them again with the 11, I'm sorry, that eight dots, not 11 dots, tapered them again with the eight dots, came through the currents, up macrame, 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 all the way around to create this macrame loop, okay? So this really was just a standalone, it could be a standalone bracelet, and it would be a standalone bracelet, you could loop this button through the macrame loop if the macrame loop was a little bit bigger, right? That's how you'd make this a standalone. But Allie continued 
by putting her um, leather through that loop, sliding on that evolve, tying on her sienna fine um, uh, sealon, and then laddering, ladder, 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 continued on down through to ladder. Looks like she changed threads here under this evolve, which is a great place to do it. Continued to ladder, 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 another evolve, probably a thread change or a thread refresh, and ladder, 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 continue on to the blooms section. And then this is where we are now, okay? What I did was I took all of that stuff away from the middle, right? So the button's up here. Then let me turn this over so you can see it on the back. It might be easier. Uh, what Allie did was she just came down with her with her leather here, and it looks like if I turn this over, you can see that her laddering thread is running along the back of this Bollywood section. See how she just incorporated it along the back? And then it terminates like down here, probably with a little bit of glue or something. But you could end this laddering thread wherever you wanted, but she just carried it along until she was done. <coughs> so I would do that. I could carry it along the back. I could add a little bit of glue intermittently if I felt like it, right? No big deal. Um, but then what she did was she started with the flat macrame incorporating the gold um, uh, regular Ceylon. And I do, Sally just asked, do you recommend Ceylon over tough cord for this project? You know, you could ladder with the tough cord, Sally, but I would go ahead and macrame with the Ceylon, and I'd use the regular Ceylon if um, you really wanted that macrame to show, okay? Because the regular Ceylon is a little bit heavier than the tough cord, and if you go to our stitchinary, um, you'll see all the comparisons of thread, and you can find the stitchinary under learning on our website at beadshop.com. So, so that's what I would do, but check and see what works for you. If you want it a little more delicate, you know, if you are using a 1.5 millimeter leather instead, you could certainly do this um, flat macrame section with a finer cord as well. You could also use Chinese knotting cord if you wanted to also, you know, make your adaptation to see what works. So then what I did was I looked at Allie's and she did hers in her flat knots in a series of three. Okay, so she's got three beads on either side here, and then she's done three pairs of the flat knot, then three, then three, and so on. So I started, I actually did four just up at the top, and then I pre-strung some beads on here just to work a little bit faster, okay? And what I did was I just went in a dot dash pattern. So I went the silver, then the yellow, then the silver, then the yellow. And so the way that it's coming out is there's yellow on the outside of this section, silver on the outside of this section. Does that make sense? What Allie did, the way that she strung hers was she did hers, um, the terracotta, the silver terracotta, and then she repeated that pattern. So there were two terracottas sitting next to each other as she strung it up. So this one just reverses it. So whatever works for you is fine, okay? so. Um, I'm going to uh, just show you how this works. And what I like about doing kind of these long sections of this flat knot, beaded flat knot with the beads there, is you really see the leather. The leather really comes forward in this design, which I like, right? If we were to do this with just one bead or two beads, you'd see less of the leather peeking through. But these three beads make a nice large window for the leather to show, and I think it looks really nice. Um, so, of course, I'm just going to slide my beads up. And you've seen me do this before, but if you haven't, you'll want to study how to do the basic flat knot. But essentially, this is a flat macrame knot, and the full knot is tied in two parts, okay? So the first part I'm going to tie, I look at my knot, I read my knot, and I see, because I stopped this a while ago, so I didn't know what side I needed to start on with my loop. See, I've got that little scallop, that little scallop of thread right there. That means that that's the side that I need to make my loop on. So what we call this is, whoops, let me slide these back up. I don't know why I was sliding them out. There we go. I slide this up, and I make 
a P shape, right? Like the letter P coming here, okay? This other half of the thread is coming down. The beads are also on it. It comes over that um, loop of the P, under the leather, and back up the loop, okay? So essentially that's a half hitch, right? And that ties down. So that's half the knot right there. So now I have to do the same thing, but in the opposite direction, okay? So I've got to keep this firm. I want to keep it tight. I'm going to come in, and here's the Q side, right? Here's my Q loop. This is loosening up a little bit. Don't worry, we're going to tighten it up again. My thread from the opposite side goes over the leg of the thread, under the leather, and back and up through that loop. Now see how everything looks kind of loose here? That's okay. Just take it in two steps. Tighten this first one back up, and then immediately come in and tighten the other one like that, okay? And that tightens them both down. Now I can see that side has the scallop, so I'm going to tie it again. So those two half hitch knots make one full flat knot, okay? So there's one and two. I'm going to do this a little more at Kate's speed now. So there's your second full one. See, there's two scallops. One on that side, one on that side. So let's do our third one, the P side here, and tighten, and the Q side here, and tighten, okay? And so that's all there is to this segment. Now, Leslie, you, I can hear you across the miles, all the way there in the UK. You are saying, how long, Kate, is this project going to take me? Well... Take this in chunks and don't be daunted, just like we did Wednesday's project, right, with the wire wrapping. You don't have to make this an epic, however many, this is one, two, three, four, this is five wraps that Allie did, right? Make it a two wrap, right, like this one that she did, or this one, or just do a single, you know, whatever. Work your way up to these epic ones. You know, Allie did that, what was it called, Mountain Mama or something that was 12 wraps. I mean, it's just nuts. It was awesome. Um, but you don't have to tackle 12 wraps at one sitting, right? Isn't there that... I don't know if it's a Hans Christian Andersen tale or a Grimm's Brothers tale, but it's the, the tailor who was um, boasting that he had 10 at one blow or whatever. I can't remember. I'm going to have to look up that fairy tale. But you don't have to take 12 wraps at one time, right? Cut it off or bite it off into little chunks until you have, uh, until you're working your way up. So a two wrap is perfectly... Um, uh, is perfectly uh, uh, respectable, right, to do that. Okay, there's that one, and I think I need one more. This way, let me see if it's that right. Whoops, I think I did that one backwards. This one, I know you guys are all telling me which way to go. At home, you're yelling, Kate, do it this way. There we go. I think I'm good. All right, so now uh, it's, time to <laughs> it's time to splice. What was I thinking? Uh, and this is going to be a short, this will make Janice laugh, right? Uh, uh, this is going to be a short little splice, right? It's not going to be a long bracelet length because this is just a little sample that I'm doing. So I'm going to come in and, um, though, you know what? I actually have to tie one more because I've got the beads on here. I can't get the beads through the Evolve. So let me tie one more section. Bear with me here just a moment while I do that. Here, and then we'll splice it because I really think it's just so terribly clever and it makes the ending look so clean and sometimes I'm a little slapdash with the ends of my wraps so this reminds me to be mindful um, and make the ends look as nice as the beginnings of your wrap there we go okay so that's good. So now, what Ali used here, here's that, um, that Evolve. 
So see, I'm right here with this. So I'm gonna slide that evolve on. I'm just gonna take my thread out from the board, my leather rather. I'm gonna slide this evolve crimp. We also have these, they're also called, we have them a little smaller called transitions, but the evolve is large enough for this two millimeter. Okay, so there goes that. Then she passed these ends. I'm gonna unknot, I knotted the ends of my threads to keep those seed beads on. So I'm gonna unknot that one. And I'm gonna unknot this one here. And I stiffened the ends of this thread, you guys, using zap glue, using my little zap glue trick. When I put some zap on a plastic baggie, I fold it in half. And while that baggie is folded in half, like this, I just run my thread through there to get some zap on here, okay? So it's, um, so it's nice and stiff. Then I'm gonna pull these through the Evolve. And someone also asked about my earrings, uh, the recipe for the earrings. Yeah, I will finish them up and I will have Drea post them as a project, you guys. So you will be able to see everything I used, okay? So don't worry. Um, We'll have that up for you too. Probably not till next week though, because I've got a couple more things in the queue before I do that. So it looks like what Allie did was if I tied three here on this side, I need to tie three over here. So let me put my leather back in the little opening down here of my macrame board. Can you see it? There it is. Okay. I'm going to put my seal on back underneath there to lift it. And now I'm just going to tie uh, three sets of flat knots. So there's one set. Remember, two of those half hitches make one complete stitch. So there's this one, one and two. There you go. And this one, one and two. Okay. Like that. Yep, that looks good. And so uh, this is going to be actually almost bracelet length. I need to put a couple of um, beads on here. So let me do that. Bear with me here while I get them on. But you can see I, um, I don't know if you can see it, but I angle cut the seal on after the zap was dry. So these beads just fall right on here just super super easy right it's just like a little self needle I love this trick and I use it a lot I'm going to use two sections of these so bear with me here oh Allie is saying splice first before tying <gasps> Allie Mori thank you I was going to hide it so what Allie has done so Allie your splice is right here, I bet. It's so hard to see because her work is so neat, but you could keep tying. Like what I could do is I could continue to tie here and I could glue it here, but let's do as Allie instructs us from afar. So I'm gonna take these off. That's the beauty of Free Tip Friday is that it should also splice under the Evolve, gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to take it out. You're going to see me do that with this awl. If you don't have an awl, it really makes short work of untying. Look at that. Okay. Let's take this out. All right. <clears throat> this is the part that always kind of freaks me out. So, but I'm just going to do it. Okay. I'm going to open it up. I'm going to, with the courage of my convictions, you guys, I'm going to cut the leather. Now, now, if this were real jewelry making time, I would take this off the board. I would measure it around my wrist. I would make sure that I was making the loop the exact right size. Here, this is demo time, right? So I'm just going to be cavalier, okay? And I know that I need some for uh, the closure. So I'm gonna leave, 
Glue the strands first before cutting. Okay, Allie Mori, I got you. I'm gonna leave about five inches. So I'm gonna glue these strands here. Okay, a little bit of glue there. Allie, I bet that's what you mean. If not, I know you're gonna tell me. This is the most fun. You guys who are watching on YouTube can't see that Allie is instructing me live <laughs> how to do this as I'm making it. This is awesome. I love it. Let me get a pin. If And I had opened this up beforehand, but it probably glued closed. If your zap glues closed, just get a pin and get in here and open it up. Okay. Now, I want to not have a giant glue blob here, so it's all about glue control, okay? So I'm zoomed in so you guys can see. I'm going to add, just with my toothpick, a little bit of zap there and a little bit of zap there so the threads, the threads are glued. Now, Allie, I'm betting that I'm going to come in, I'm going to cut this, let's see, I'm going to say about right there, that's what I'm going to do, I'm going to do it, then I'll slide the Evolve back over, alright, so here comes the splice everybody, ready, clip at an angle, there we go, look at that, yes, and then, I'm going to clip, let me make this a little bit bigger, <clears throat> just depending on how much thread or how much cord I need left over. I'm going to slide this down, and this also would be a, a place for you to measure and say, oh, okay, I need, like if this were really going to be a bracelet length, I would want almost seven inches, right? So that looks about right. So I'm gonna come in, see how I cut that one on the angle? Right, everybody keep breathing, it's okay. All right, just don't worry. That's cut at an angle. I'm gonna cut this one at an angle. Let's do it. Ta-da, done, okay? It's like cutting, do any of you or any of you guys knitters? Right? I'm a knitter. Do any of you guys cut, do like when you put a, a zipper in, you know, you cut a steak in a sweater, right? You knit it, then you knit a couple of pearl rows and stuff, and then you cut the sweater open at those pearl rows to add your, um, to add your zipper in. It's the same thing. You've got to do it with the courage of your convictions, you guys. Who cares, right? If it all ends in tears. There's always another bracelet to be made. Doesn't matter. So now I'm going to put in my glue there. Okay. And this may be a little high. I might have wanted to cut it maybe a little bit lower, depending on how much I want that Evolve to cover it. But that's okay. I'm going to hold it there for a second. Let the two... Um, pieces of leather come together. Okay, let me move my my hand there so you can see. Count to about ten. Right there, you go. It's holding together. the The thing about this zap that I like is it's pretty instant. So it's not quite like super glue, but it really holds things down. I'm going to let that hold for just a second here. I'm not going to rush it. Then we're going to slide that Evolve on down. And we're going to macrame right over this splice, you know. And, you guys, I bet you have a scrap of leather that you can practice this on. I would say, just like I always say, they don't send the pitcher out to the mound if they haven't warmed up yet right? So don't do this on a project 
that you haven't practiced, you know, if you haven't practiced it before. So get yourself a little practice piece like I'm doing and practice it, right? So there's my glue underneath everything, okay? I'm gonna add just a hair more zap for my flat knot. Just there. See that? Leslie, you say that you're a knitter. If you're a knitter, madam, you will certainly be a ladder braceleter. So, you know, don't, uh, don't be daunted at all. So I'm going to move that around. Now I'm just going to come in and I'm going to uh, macrame. It doesn't matter if I start with the right side, the P side, or the Q side. It doesn't matter. But I'm going to come in. Let me get all of this business out of the way. And that first knot, I want to really place it right there because there's glue. So I don't want to screw this up. I want to. I want the knot to be right where I want it. So I have to be kind of mindful. And I'll secure the end of the bracelet down in just a second. But I want to get it all nice and clean and tight. Use that all to help you move your thread into position. There we go. But really be in the moment for this, right? <laughs> Thanks for the encouragement, Allie. <laughs> Allie just said in the Facebook comments that I've got this. You know I do, sister. I've got this. You know what? Honestly, this is like the second splice I've ever done in my lifetime, but it's okay. You know, grab the bowl by the horns or, or the bead by the, by the tube. I don't know. Just get in there. Do it. So I think I need to tie one. I'm going to tie one more because I want it to look visually equal, even if maybe there's one more knot here. But visually, I want it to all line up. There we go. Okay. So now we're just going to finish. Okay, so there's the splice. That splice is going nowhere. Let me um, zoom in a little bit so you can see it. So now what I can do is I can um, pin this side down. <clears throat> so, so I've got some space there, or I've got a little bit of tension. And maybe I'll lift it up on this side with that. There we go. So I've got some underneath room here. And then I'll just, now we'll put the beads on. Thanks, Allie, for that far away coaching. And that was the best. All right? One and two. I love that Kim Crawford is saying that her husband has the look of fear in his eyes when she does two things. One when she has glue in her hand and one when she has a torch in her hand. Perfect. <laughs> That's the way it should be. Don't be afraid of the torch or the glue. Let's put that one in, and then I'll just tie one more knot, and then I'll show you what, how to how to do the closure. But we got through we got through the splice. Okay, so not too difficult. And again, under the learning section of um, the link that Drea put up on the website. Um, it has her written out instructions for Ali Splice as well, so um, but I think you guys can get it from the video also. Get this in there. There we go. Tighten it up. And sometimes, as I said before, with these beads, they wanna they wanna loosen a little bit. So come in, tighten that knot, and then come in and slide that second knot right up so it's nice and tight. Then you'll just keep going until the um, loop that you're leaving is big enough to go around your button that you've chosen, right? So I would just keep going. I would keep macrame, 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 macrame. Then I would look at my loop and obviously I would hate to, I would add more thread probably because I'm going to run out here. But I would just come in and I'd probably macrame to right here or so, just so I have enough 
room for this loop. Okay, and that's it. Make sure that the you're using an even amount though of of leather on both sides. But that's it. That's all she wrote. Pretty pretty simple. And a really great addition um, to this. You could also, if you wanted it to look a little bit different, you could do a few and then you could, um, instead of um, macrame all the way to the end, you could silk wrap the end, right? Um, however you wanted to finish this off would be, uh, it's really up to you. But I like this little Azteca, this little tiny one. We actually ordered it, I think, as a mistake once. And we liked it so much that we just kept it. So I think it's a really cute little button. So that's it. Again, I'm using the large design board, the large macrame board, rather, um, and the T-pins on this one. But you could use your um, deep dish tray as well. Uh, and then one last look at Allie's piece. But you can go um, to Bead Shop and see this whole project. Right now, if you're watching this live, it's on the homepage, um, so you can find it that way, okay? Um, and you'll see the um, project map all laid out like so for this five wrap, like this, um, as well as the additional pictures that Ms. Mori sent to us of her other two Argyle socks and blooms right there okay so super fun i hope you guys enjoyed it it was a fun walk through this epic wrap so good uh, i'm going to turn the camera around um and uh i should i you know it's in karen's room so i can't grab it but um we have um a really great show for you next week um, we are debuting a new product on Tuesday, so watch your newsletters. That is Tuesday. I'll, let me look at the date. Um, it is Tuesday, October 7th is the, um, is, the, uh, is the date for that product launch. And you guys, that Wednesday, the, um, Sorry, Tuesday the 8th, did I say that? Was that right? That Wednesday the 9th, that Facebook um, broadcast, we have a wonderful new wrap. Oh, here comes Karen. I think she must have been watching. That Those, those guys are sneaky. I'm going to give you a sneak peek then. Let me work the camera here as I am my own camera person on Wednesdays. Let me, or on Fridays, as you know. Let me lift it up. Okay, you guys want a sneak peek? I'll give you a sneak peek. Karen just handed it to me. Um, this was a Janus um, design idea that was executed and finished by Brittany. So I had no hand in this whatsoever. You can see I'm still wearing my one earring. I had no hand in creating this at all, but I can't wait to share um, it with you on Wednesday's broadcast. So see what I've got here? They go live on Tuesday. See these tiny little 1.8 millimeter cubes. Can you see them just there? There they are. We have them in, I don't know how many colors. So gorgeous. And so we are doing an amazing, beautiful, epic, look at these, look at those cubes. They're the tiny cubes. They're so good. I cannot wait. Um, to play with these. So this wrap, I'll tell you how many wraps this is. One, and it's just one long, it's just kind of like a stream of consciousness, this one. But look at how just gorgeous this looks. How many wraps am I at? This is one, two, three, four, five, six. I think it's a six wrap, maybe. Just crazy. Let me get it all together and then I'll show it to you one more time. Yeah, the cubes, you guys, the cubes are so good. Janice and I were trying to, you know, we wanted to add a new bead to the bead shop bead family. And we just settled on these cubes. We love them so much. 
and we have them in, Janice just put in, we have them in 23 colors, and they'll be up, as I say, on Tuesday, that Tuesday. So look at this beautiful wrap, how gorgeous this is. And so Brittany, this just came in the mail, like not a half hour ago, right? So um, she just finished this and sent it off. So next Wednesday, this will be our project. And the cubes will be up. Uh, they're not up yet, but they will be up. Watch your newsletter. They will be up on Tuesday, October 8th in time for uh, the project on the 9th. I just love it. It's Brittany, you did an amazing, amazing job for this. So um, so that's what's shaken. And again, you don't have to make this an epic six wrap. You can take the elements of this piece um, and create uh, exactly what works for you. But we're going to talk about how to ladder super wide like this, ladder thin, add thread, all kinds of great stuff. So um, it's going to be a beautiful one. This is uh, such a keeper. It's just gorgeous. So that's what I've got. That's what's coming next week. Um, I also, I want to let you guys know one more thing before I go. <clears throat> um, we're going to have a really wonderful special guest that's going to join us in November. She's coming from the uh, other side of the country. Our dear friend, Cynthia Thornton, Green Girl, is going to be here in mid-November. And we have some fun things cooked up with Cynthia. So stay tuned to your newsletters because there'll be more information about that as well. So we can't wait um, to have Cynthia on on the show. End of the month, uh, end of October, Brittany's going to be back for another Brittany project, which is going to be great. We're going to do another take on her Bollywood. Um, as well as um, we have... Um, uh, some other fun projects that Janice and I are cooking up that we were just actually even working on this morning. So that's what we've got. We're careening right into the holidays with all kinds of wonderful projects. Check your newsletters, you guys. We've got a great promotion going on this weekend starting today. There's um, a sale on the website on everything that we call hardware and you can stack your fall 10 discount or your loyalty points all of that with that so it's a great time to grab all the findings and stuff that you're going to need for all of your pieces like your ear wires so this will be up soon um and that's my story i'm sticking to it i'll see you guys next week on wednesday for bead shop live and then friday for free tip friday thanks so much for joining me and we'll see you guys soon. Have a great weekend, everybody. Bye-bye.